I used to get mad at tools and things. I had an exposure meter that crapped out on a commercial we were doing in Westchester. And I took it outside. It was a $500 meter. And with all my force, I threw it against a brick wall. You couldn't even find the parts of it. The problem with contemporary things in general, not just bikes, is, is that everything is hidden. Everything, all the workmanship is hidden. All the materials that are used, you can't differentiate whether it's steel or aluminum or fiberglass. Why hide this? This is beautiful, this sort of polished steel and the and, and the spot wells, or the wells, the line wells. I mean, it's just beautiful, clear-coated. The, the process of working on it creates the vision of what it's going to be, so it evolves all the time. I, 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 in the point of view is I had no idea what it was going to be when I started, but I would just start working on it and see where it went. Anything anyone builds is always affected by their sense of aesthetics and their sense of taste. And so this has shown me, and something I never realized about myself before, is that I love metal. I love the different colors, textures, 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 The thing that took me the longest to learn was wiring electrical. I figured it out enough that I can do it. Uh, yeah, this is unusual, because what I've decided to do is, on this BMW, most BMWs, the Germans spent a lot of time and effort hiding every cable. And what the philosophy of this bike is to take everything that was hidden and make it visible. So I've taken every cable and tried to pull it off to show show it so that you it, to me you really get the feeling of motorcycle if you can see the systems uh, you look around the shop and there are a million different things. And uh, if you look at it, it looks very complicated. But in fact, it's very simple. I think you surround yourself with things that feel comfortable. It's almost as if I have the, all the evidence of the different things I've been interested in my life, and I have them all in drawers organize it in terms of decades. You could have the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and in each one would be the parts of whatever you were interested in then. So in a way, my whole history goes into this bike, but it's not consciously, and I don't identify with it. It's just the reason that I kept the parts to begin with is they were really cool parts. And so I, uh, I end up using them. And having a shop like that's wonderful. You can do almost anything in there. It isn't just bikes. It makes life easier. What do you think? Now we get a really good idea of what that's going to look like. Oh, that's beautiful. That, th these are the kind of moments where I just get amazing amount of joy when I see that something works aesthetically and it just looks and it just looks perfect.
Where's the fire extinguisher? It's right there, Calvin, up behind the uh, plasma cutter on the shelf. Heavy So the day I was going to start the bike, Calvin came over. Step one. Calvin is an ex-student, loves bikes, and so we're going to start the bike. Oh my God! Look at that. There's a hole in the tank. Shit! It's a float. How the hell could that happen? Oh man, that's going to take. This is stopping, which I find bizarre, which means we could still try to start it. Let's see what happens. This may not work. Um, let's try and start on. It's definitely not getting gas somewhere. No. Uh, it's fire. just, it's too bad. When you're doing a freeform bike like this, you can never expect it to, to function that well. Just so it doesn't stress you out, you have to come back and say, okay, well, I'm gonna to deal today, I'm gonna to deal with one or two of the issues. I'm gonna tighten these bolts, I'm gonna do this. There's no way I'm gonna have the patience to go back and redo something because this bike is not about redoing anything. It's about dealing with what you've got and fixing it in a funky way. Brass, you really can't weld, I don't think. It just disintegrates. What I have to do here is I have to make sure that this outer handle doesn't slip and turn. I drill the hole and then I'm gonna weld the aluminum under it. The chances of it not breaking again are probably 50%. If this holds, then I'll be able to uh, start synchronizing the carbs. So my uh, Hello. friends come over from time to time to look hey. at this. Hi. They tend to get it right on the first What's bounce. What's going on? This is pretty cool. This is... Is a saddle? Uh, yeah. I'd like to call it like gutter punk or apocalypse punk. If you were in the future after the apocalypse and you had to build something, what would it look like based on the availability of the parts that you would find in that environment. A couple of bikers came over and took one look at, look at it and didn't stop laughing for two minutes. And that to me is the best reaction I can get because it shows that they really appreciate technically the attitude of the solutions that are on the bike. You know, it's really strange because it crept up on me the fact that it was almost done the good news is i have two other ones ready to go if this was the end of me working out here in the garage it would be suicidal there's no it's unfortunate that kids think that if they spend 18,000 on a sport bike that they're going to be admired where do their dreams go when they turn the key off at night? And it's sad because it's the American way of living. The new car, the new house, the new bike, because it's not the pride of ownership, it's the pride of learning, it's the pride of building, it's the pride of creating something.
I realized about this bike on the first ride is it is insane to drive. It doesn't go that well. You have to lean over too much. The horse saddle is too slippery, so you tend to slide off of the bike. It's missing on one cylinder. The brakes don't work very well. Handlebars are loose. It's just endless, endless things that I have to fix. There are ways to build a bike to almost ensure that you will not have to debug much of it. And then there are ways to build a bike where you know you're going to have to debug it, but you really don't care. I think that this bike was never built to be ridden. It's more, it was meant to have people look at it and say, holy shit, look at this. This is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I think that, uh, unfortunately, people don't look toward stuff that you do with your hands as aspirational when you're looking for work or going to school. The thing is, Seth, you're asking me to intellectualize something. But in fact, this bike has nothing to do with what I talk about. When I'm out in the workshop, and a lot of people will tell you this when they're out working with their hands, time stands still. It's my world. There's nothing. There's no politics. There's no wars. There's nothing. There's just this. So it's a kind of meditation for me. It's that simple. It's the end of the story. There is nothing more. I think it's just exquisite. I truly do. It's, it's, it's remarkable. I'd like to say something really smart, Jack, but I can't. Sure it's a can. fucking death trap. Look at this thing. <laughs> what the fuck? But I love it. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's Jack, isn't it? You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just an incredible mess. <laughs>